Hello everyone. Before we get started, I just want to say thank you very much for all the nice comments despite all my mistakes in the previous video. I'll remake that video later on and hopefully fix all these errors, but I just wanted to say I appreciate all your positive comments and all your support. All right, let's get started. Today's problem is finding the integer value of x squared minus 3x, a polynomial expression, given that x to the fourth power minus 57x minus 70 is equal to 0. So we're going to be manipulating this expression in a couple different ways. I'm going to show you two methods here. My first method involves something that is not widely known. That's why I wanted to start with that. You know, no pain, no gain. So I'm going to start with a little bit uh, more painful method. So here's my first method. I'm going to call this expression A, and then I'm going to isolate x squared from here. Let's go ahead and do it. x squared can be written as 3x plus a. Now, I'll, go, I'll use this expression in the original equation, but first I need to raise a higher power. So this is my x squared, and that's going to be critical. Let's go ahead and evaluate the value of x cubed using this equation. So x cubed can be written as x squared times x and replace x squared with 3x plus a and then multiply by x. That's going to be 3x squared plus ax. And then now replace this x squared with 3x plus a from here. And you're going to get x cubed. This is x cubed, remember, in terms of x again. This is going to give you 9x. This is going to give you ax. So I can write it as a plus 9 quantity x plus 3a. And this is going to be my x cubed value. Now let's go ahead and evaluate x to the fourth power using the same idea. Multiply x cubed by x and that's going to be a plus 9x or I could probably just do the following. Since multiplying by x is fairly easy, let me go ahead and just write it this way. a plus 9x when multiplied by x is going to be x squared and 3a will be 3ax. Now I want to replace x squared with this one, 3x plus a, one more time. Let's go ahead and do it. This is x to the fourth, remember. And now x squared will be replaced with 3x plus a. So the whole idea is to make everything linear. Express all the powers of x uh, as a linear because we are able to do that. And now here, if you distribute, you get 3ax plus a squared plus 27x plus 9a plus 3ax. And if you simplify this, we get the following. 3x plus 3x is 6ax plus 27. 6a plus 27 times x plus a squared plus 9a. Now this is the most critical part because now we got the value of x to the fourth power in terms of x and that's a linear expression. Now let's go back to our original problem. In the original problem, we are given that x to the fourth minus 57x minus 70 is equal to zero. So can we write it in a different way? x to the fourth minus 57x minus 70 equals zero. By the way, this is a quartic, but it's a reduced quartic, so it doesn't have the x cubed term. If you wanted to use the formula, you're more than welcome, even though it's quite complicated. Yes, you can find the solutions to this equation. Actually, my second approach is going to touch upon that, so let's go ahead and leave it at that. Now, this is my expression x to the fourth. Let's go ahead and isolate x to the fourth here. It's going to be 57x plus 70. Now, what I want to do is I want to associate these two expressions since both of them are equal to x to the fourth, and this is true for all values of x because these are polynomials. I can safely say that these expressions are equal. So let's write it as 6a plus 27 quantity multiplied by x plus a squared minus, I mean, plus 9a is equal to 57x plus 70. Now, what does that equality tell you? These are polynomials that are always equal for all values of x. It means that the coefficient of x here is 57, and because it's 57 on the right-hand side, and the constant term is supposed to be 70. But even the first equation gives you what you need, and we just need to check that with the second one. From here, we get 6a equals 30, and a equals 5. And if you go ahead and plug in a equals 5 here, you're going to notice that we get 25 plus 45, which gives us 70, so we, we get the same a value, which is verified. And if you remember, a was, a was x squared minus 3x, and we we're supposed to find the integer value of this expression, right? 
and we find the a value so we found the answer so x squared minus 3x is equal to 5 then right and this concludes the first method let's go ahead and talk about the second method my second method actually is based upon my first method well not necessarily so it kind of it's kind of based on the question. If you go back to the original problem and the question, we're being asked to find the integer value of x squared minus 3x. So that kind of tells me that x squared minus 3x is special. So why not use it as a possible factor? And just forget about the, the answer because you already know it, so it's kind of spoiled. But this is what I'd like to do. Well, I do have x to the fourth power minus 57x minus 70. And from here, I should be able to find the value of x squared minus 3x as an integer. So that means that this quartic has uh, two factors, one of which is quadratic, or actually both are quadratic, and the coefficients are integers. They're supposed to be. Why? Because x squared minus 3x is equal to an integer. So let's call that just, I don't know, n. This means that x squared minus 3x minus n equals 0 is a possible factor. But instead of writing it as a minus n, I just want to write it as a positive term, and I just want to use positive a here. So let's go ahead and write it as x squared minus 3x plus a, but of course we have to have another factor which is also quadratic, and notice that we're missing the cubic term, that's why the coefficients of x have to be opposite so that when you distribute, when you multiply x squared by x, uh, they cancel out. Make sense? And let's go ahead and call the second constant b here. I don't know what it is, but I'll find out. Let's go ahead and distribute everything on the left-hand side, and we get x to the fourth plus 3x cubed plus bx squared minus 3x cubed minus 9x minus 3bx plus a x squared plus 3ax plus ab. We get nine terms, so that's a mouthful. But notice that what I said was verified because x cubed cancels out. Let's go ahead and add like terms. We have b squared, a squared, uh, I mean, yeah, bx squared, ax squared, and we don't really have any other, do we have any other x squared? Yes, I do. Well, obviously, I made a mistake here. I mess up. So this should be a negative 9x squared. So we do get uh, a plus b minus 9x squared. Okay, so that's the coefficient of x squared. And then let's go ahead and check the coefficient of x. I have 3ax minus 3bx, so it's 3a minus 3b times x. And my constant term is ab. Now, I'm going to set it equal to my original expression because that were the, those were the factors. So it's supposed to equal this one. So again, we have something similar like the equality of two polynomials, which indicates that the coefficient of x squared is 0 because we don't have an x squared here on the right-hand side. And the coefficient of x is equal to negative 57, so I can set that equal to negative 57. And the constant term is negative 70. Even though I don't need it, I'll just use it to verify my answer. So from... The first one, the coefficient of x squared, I get a plus b equals 9. From the coefficient of x, I get a minus b. If I divide both sides by 3, I get a minus b is equal to negative 9. And this is good enough for me to find a and b. Let's go ahead and find it. You know, this is an easy system. 2a equals negative 10. a equals negative 5. And if you plug it in, you get b equals 14. Great. I found the value of a and b, but just for, uh, you know, you know, just to make sure that we're getting the same thing. Uh, let's check it here. A, B is supposed to be negative 70, and it actually checks. So it's all good. Now, what is that supposed to mean? It just means that my original expression, the quartic, can be written in factored form like this. So this is my factored form. And since I found the values of A and B, A being negative 5 and B is 14, that means I can write this as x squared minus 3x minus 5. And then that's multiplied by x squared plus 3x plus 14. So we were able to factor the quartic. Here's one thing that's really important. We're going to set this equal to 0. Because if you remember, my original expression was equal to 0. My quartic was equal to 0. That's how we got the x values. So now, from here, I can basically find the solutions or roots for this quartic as setting this both of these equal to zero. If I set the first one equal to zero, I get the following. But remember, we don't have to find the x values because what we're looking for is the integer value of x squared minus 3x, and that just happens to be 5. What about the other piece? 
Doesn't that give us any other solutions? Well, if you look at this quadratic equation, you're going to find that its discriminant is less than zero. Therefore, you're not gonna get any real solutions. Forget about, let alone integers. You're not even getting real solutions from here. So both solutions of this quad uh, quadratic is uh, will be complex. So that doesn't really help us because we're looking for integer solutions. And this brings us to the end of this video. Well, thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed it. Please let me know. Don't forget to comment, like, and subscribe. I'll see you tomorrow with another video. Until then, be safe, take care, and bye-bye.